If you could fly over the southeastern United States, you would see forests stretching to the horizon. Half of Tennessee is covered with forest. Even farms and cities have pockets of forest. Most of it is owned by thousands of people like you and I. The forest provides us many benefits. It is a home for many kinds of birds and animals, and it gives us clean water and wild plants. The may apple is used to treat cancer. The root of ginseng, a forest wildflower, is used for medicine and tea. This barrel of dried roots is worth over $12,000. This man makes a living gathering wild grapevines from the forest and selling them to department stores. Some plants are beautiful or rare, and they need to be protected. Wood comes from the forest. We use wood in houses to make fine furniture and hundreds of other things from baseball bats to paper to rayon. Wood comes from trees. New trees will grow back to replace the ones we cut. The logs are sawed into boards, which are made into other products. 60,000 people in Tennessee make their living harvesting trees and making things from wood. Forests are also a beautiful place to go and enjoy nature, to camp, or hunt, or other outdoor recreation. A day out in the woods makes us all feel better. These are the good things the forest gives us. You might call them the five W's of the forest. Wood, water, wildlife, wild plants, and um, recreation. We can help forests produce more of these five W's. Some forests are in better shape than others. This forest is in great shape. It doesn't need much help right now. This forest is young, but it's in great shape too. This one needs help, and so does this one. And this one has its problems too. To be in top shape, a forest needs a trainer or a manager, just like a baseball team. A forest can be improved, but first it has to be protected from injury. Forests need protection from wildfire. Wildfire kills small trees and it hurts older trees. Diseases can get in through the fire scars. Wildfire hurts people too. Fires are spotted from airplanes and fire towers. It's important to spot wildfires while they are still small and get there fast. Crewmen plow or dig a line around the fire to contain it. Then they fight fire with fire. They start a small line of flame that burns into the wildfire and stops it. State foresters teach fire departments how to fight forest wildfires without getting hurt. And they work with sheriffs and police to find clues and catch fire setters. Setting forest fires on purpose is a crime. It can bring up to five years in jail. The best way to fight a fire is to keep it from happening in the first place. Only you can prevent forest fires. The forest needs protection against insect outbreaks and diseases. Sometimes a bug will get out of control, but we have ways of dealing with pests, like the invading gypsy moth. The moths check in, but they don't check out. Soil and streams need protection. Forest streams are naturally clear because of tree roots and leaves. Leaves protect the soil from raindrops, and a tough mat of roots keeps it from washing away. Even if all the trees were cut down, the roots are still there protecting the soil, keeping the water clean and clear. We can't make the water in the forest streams any cleaner than nature makes it, but we can sometimes dirty it up with bad roads or sloppy logging. We can protect the land and water by building good roads and logging carefully. We should be especially careful around streams. Streams are important to us and to wildlife. Like people, birds and animals get five things they need from the forest. One is water. Another is food. A third is shelter from the cold. A fourth is cover to hide from enemies. And finally, space. Animals need plenty of room, and they need to stay hidden as they travel from one block of forest to another. We can make the forest a better place for wildlife by giving them more of what they need the most. If they need water, build a pond. If the forest is too open and windy in the winter, plant evergreens like pine and cedar, which block the wind and keep animals warm. Small birds and animals like brush and vines to hide in. Hawks and owls and woodpeckers and squirrels perch and nest in big or dead trees. We can leave trees for them when we harvest timber. There are several ways to give animals more food. We can plant it or burn for it. Believe it or not, small, carefully controlled fires can be good for wildlife. 
It doesn't hurt the animals. They can easily get away. The fire kills the old woody bushes that wildlife can't eat, and it lets fresh, tender, nutritious plants grow. The same good food grows in sunny openings. Clearings in the forest are like magnets that draw wildlife. Animals especially like the edges of the forest, where they have good food close to hiding cover. Deer like the edge of the forest. So do bluebirds and rabbits and mice and the creatures that eat rabbits and mice. We can grow food and make edges for wildlife by cutting patches of trees. But a few birds, like warblers and tanagers, don't like openings. They need large areas of unbroken forest, like in wilderness areas and big parks. There are so many kinds of animals and birds in the forest with so many different needs for food and shelter that the best way to do the most good for the most animals is to give them a diverse forest with many kinds of trees and many different ages of trees. We need hunters too. Hunters take the place of an important animal that is now gone from Tennessee, the cougar. Cougars killed excess deer and kept nature in balance. Without them, there would be too many deer. The deer would eat up all their food and then starve in the winter. So those are some of the ways that we can make things better for forest wildlife. Now let's talk about another one of the W's we get from the forest, wood. Not all trees make good wood. Now this is a regular wildlife hotel, but it's no good for timber. It's rotten and limmy. This is a great shade tree, but it's also too limmy for timber. Ah, now that's more like it. Tall, straight, solid, and no limbs. Why no limbs? Well, limbs make knots. How many knots do you see in this fine furniture? Zero. We can help the forest grow valuable wood like this. Start with the right kind of trees. You might call them sprinters, trees that grow fast, tall, and straight, and have only a few knots. Tulip poplar, oak, walnut, ash, and cherry are sprinters. Sprinter trees need full sunlight. They die in the shade. If we grow them close together out in the open, sprinter trees grow straight up and quickly lose their lower limbs. Beneath these sprinters are trees that can grow in the shade. You might call them plotters because they grow so slowly. All these trees in this picture are the same age. So are these. This big sprinter is worth hundreds of dollars. The plotters around it never will make good timber and they'll keep timber from growing back. For years, people have cut the best trees and left the limmy, rotten, crooked ones. Not much good timber grows back in their shade. We can grow better timber simply by cutting groups of trees, good and poor alike. This makes sunny openings where sprinter trees can grow, and it's good for wildlife. Hardwood forests start growing back right away. This looks like brush, but it is really a forest of one-year-old trees that sprouted from seeds and from living tree stumps and roots. These sprouts grow very fast. This one is only five years old. Here is a healthy young oak forest. All it needs is to be protected until it is old, ready to be cut again for timber. But not too old, because trees don't live forever. Then their wood can't be used. We can give trees checkups to see how they're doing. We can take samples without hurting the tree and read the rings to tell how old the tree is, how fast it's growing, and if it is healthy. Foresters analyze the information they collect. Then they show landowners ways they can help their forest. No forest? Plant tree seedlings. White pine grows very fast. These trees are only five years old. These are 19, and this forest is only 40 years old. Loblolly pine seedlings can turn a worn out field into a tall forest in less than 20 years. Tough pines can be used to repair the earth. This cornfield had gullies 30 feet deep. Pine seedlings were planted, and now 50 years later we have a forest instead of a wasteland. Trees can be planted on garbage dumps and strip mines. Foresters grow these seedlings in big nurseries, and they breed super trees that grow faster than wild trees. We need trees in the city, too. Trees can turn a hot, barren neighborhood into a cool, shady one. Trees save energy, clean the air, and dampen noise. They provide homes for birds and squirrels, and they are beautiful. 
You can grow your own forest in your own yard. This one is only three years old. We've talked about some of the ways to protect and improve the forest so it can provide us with the five W's, wood, wildlife, water, wild plants, sand, recreation. Speaking of recreation, there are a lot of things to do and see in the forest, if you're willing to go look. Whether you walk, or ride a horse, or ride a bike or car, you'll find that improving wildlife and timber can also improve your recreation. Logging and fire roads get us into the forest. Wildlife and timber openings make the forest more interesting. They add sunlight, songbirds, butterflies, wildflowers, blackberries, and views. Be careful and woods wise when you visit the forest though. There are some dangers out there. Know how to avoid them. And tell someone where you're going. Get permission from the landowner and treat the land as if it were yours. After all, it's up to everyone to protect and improve this forest that gives us so much.